Morning, boys. What's good, man? Good morning. Feeling tired this morning. I can't lie. When did you get back? <laughs> Just last night. We had the the flight was like when? What day is it today? Friday. Yeah, the flight was like Wednesday in Mexico, but because of the time difference, it was like a a ten hour flight. It was an evening flight in Mexico, like ten hours. But then I was flying to Gatwick, so I had to go get my car from somewhere near the airport and then drive back from Gatwick, which took like six hours. But when you're doing that on like barely any sleep, oh man, mm. you feel like you're tripping. Yeah. Like you're just so yeah. tired just driving. Um, but I had to drive to Huddersfield first to get my dog and then back to Manchester. So I got oh, back man, like, long. Fuck. yeah, <laughs> after a 10 hour flight as well. So I got back late last night and then I just, yeah, I slept for a long time. Must have slept for like 12 hours straight. And that's when I woke up and texted you guys. I was like, can we do it at 11? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just so tired. Yeah, no, that's that fair. That trip seemed to go really fast though. You, you was there for two weeks. Yeah. Y- yeah, just under, well, we were in Mexico for 10 nights, but because we stayed in London the night before and then all the traveling and stuff on the way back. Yeah, it kind of, it was pretty much like two weeks. How was it? But yeah, yeah it went, went quick, went quick. It was sick. Yeah, it was a crazy trip. Um, We were on the resort for most of the time because it was my brother's wedding. There was just so many people there, so it made sense to do a resort trip where you just kind of have everything you need there. Like, there was a few different restaurants there. But then when you're on those resort trips, like, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm on holiday, I like to explore the areas and, like, see how the locals live and experience the actual culture. When you're on the resort, you don't really get that properly. But we managed to do it a few nights. I think where we were as well, like, Cancun has only been around for, like, 50 years. So you don't really get true culture there. But then we went to a few local towns as well, um, just to get some food, and the, but only like a couple of the nights, and that was sick. You forget how like crazy Mexico actually is. Like when um we went to this place like 15 minutes away, I can't remember the area, but we uh, we had some nice food there, and then one of my friends was just like just scrolling through news, and because he was getting it in the local area, we were on this like square, and. Four weeks, yeah, four weeks ago, like some cartel members had driven through and threw a bucket with someone's head onto the square with all the the pedestrians there and then just started letting off some shots and then someone took a, someone someone got hit with a stray bullet. Like that's just in this like small square, like just 15 minutes off the resort. And when you're there, it's like (laughs) nothing like, nothing dodgy was happening. You feel safe and everything, but it's like... Just, it's just wow. a whole another level of craziness out there. Yeah, that's insane. Did you, I always thought did, that the cartel was more just never against pedestrians or civil. What do you call them? C- civilians. I thought it was just civilians yeah. cartel yeah. versus cartel thing, but that's crazy. I think it is, but I think it was just like someone got hit with a, a stray bullet. They were just like sending a message to other people that were out there, mm-hmm. and I don't know mm. like the whole story of it. Like, who knows? whose head it was and what was going on but this was just like one story from like a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. and apparently out there like this year alone there's been like 37 candidates who were like running for president i guess who had been assassinated Whoa. 37 okay, people. Like, imagine that happening in england like <sighs> in england there's so many people that are like running to be prime minister Imagine 37 people getting assassinated here. You'd have to be crazy Man. to want to go for that job. Yeah. Wow. Did they put you it, off going outside I of mean, the resort when you were there? Not really. <laughs> I can't lie. <laughs> I'm pretty like, I don't know if I'm just naive, but I just think, yeah, you got to be like s- smart. Like Cancun, obviously Cancun's different to like going to maybe even Mexico City but then Mexico City people say it's alright as well as long as you're just smart about what you're doing like maybe I guess not like walking anywhere, around it's with like, chains out and, yeah it's like in London yeah if you're in the wrong spots at the wrong time like you're gonna you're asking for it but like yeah you just gotta be smart with the timings and where you're going and, and stuff like that 
exactly just don't get involved with, with the, like the wrong people obviously everyone's there like when you're walking down the beach people are like trying to sell you drugs and stuff like just just stay away from certain things and you should be okay yeah. but cancun is very touristy like it's only been there 50 years so it's very yeah it's just like a lot of people from america there go there to party especially for like spring break and stuff um it's a lot of like tourist stuff to do a lot of excursions so mm. if you're in cancun like you, you're fine really and then in other like local areas it seemed to be okay so yeah i, I was fine with it really there's loads of like resorts there so they they don't really advise they don't say you have to stay on the resort it's just like if you leave it's at your own risk i guess but yeah everything was cool mm-hmm. yeah but i imagine no, there's other then. places in mexico where it's like yeah this kind of feels sketchy walking around yeah yeah no i hear that yeah definitely you i want to go to tulum as parts. well yeah tulum was sick tulum was like probably took like an hour and a half to drive which is like south from where we were staying and just saw some like mayan ruins which is pretty cool like buildings that have been there for thousands of years yeah and then we went to another place nearby we did some like sort of like cave diving not proper cave diving oh, yeah. like we weren't wearing like snorkels and going right under but we were like swimming through these caves and you have like all these like thousands of bats just like hanging from the ceiling which is pretty freaky mm-hmm. and then you have like goggles on so when you look underwater you can just see like you can just see caves like going you can't even see like the end of them they have like thousands of caves that connect like underground um or underwater and and that was pretty freaky as well just to see what everything looks like um but that was just like one of those excursion trips with a bit of zip lining as well nice i like doing stuff like that though i i'm not one of those people that can just sit and lie down all day i get so bored yeah (laughs) do you do that if i could start my day doing something either like an activity or go to the gym or something then i can chill out for a bit but just to, like yeah. wake up and then just sit on the beach all day. Like I get, I get very restless. Yeah, you can see why people do those those holidays where they go. It's like a res, like a resort like a resort style holiday, but then there's like, a, like a schedule for the week where they have like, like a yoga session in the morning and then like, they do whatever they want for oh, a few yeah. hours and then like like a session in the end of the day like it's more of like a, more of like a, a fitness retreat kind of thing. Uh, yeah I, li- I like the sound of those things yeah of course yeah 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 whereas my girlfriend though she can just stay on the beach all day just like <laughs> wake up get some breakfast, yeah. just lay there all day <laughs> yeah i'm like I, yeah. Need to do- I need to do something i just had to leave her for a bit and and go to the gym or i don't know use my body a bit yeah how was um how was like not working whilst you were there did you find yourself like itching to get to your laptop or were you not too bad yeah i can't lie it's i, I kind of struggled because i think that's that's been like the longest time i've took off making beats anyway i didn't make one beat when i was there but i ended up just like getting on my laptop a few times just to like sort some admin stuff out like apply to emails and things like that and i was trying to like upload my shorts and stuff i missed a few days of uploading like short content but i have my youtube videos scheduled to upload um but yeah i'm I'm definitely ready to go back to it now i feel like that was way more time than i needed to to rest so yeah i'm I'm definitely ready to go back yeah how was the actual wedding 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 was sick yeah we um because there were so many of us there like i had my canadian family there um the girl that my brother's marrying uh, that he married sorry was Italian so she had her t- Italian family there so there was like 70 of us in Cancun wow. in total so yeah it was sick it rained like a little bit when we were eating so we thought oh that was gonna like take it like ruin the day but it only lasted like five minutes and it was just back to it so yeah the actual wedding day was sick it, it went really well they had um the only thing that happened was they had like usually I think when people get married there, they, they stop the activities around the pool because there's like loud music and people cheering and everything. So usually they stop that, but they, they forgot to do it for my brother's wedding. So when they were doing the vows, you could hear people like cheering behind, like playing volleyball and stuff. <laughs> so they were a bit annoyed <laughs> about that. But to make it up to them, they, they upgraded their room 
for the second half of their holiday so they had oh, this like nice. basically like the master suite there like they had this whole apartment Damn. with the ocean view and um like a hot tub on the balcony like sun lounges on the balcony like just a mm -hmm. just a sick room so they were like yeah we'll take that cheering any day to to get this room <laughs> yeah that's that, that it. makes up for it i guess yeah yeah but yeah it was nice man i could just like before that i couldn't i always think like man spending 20 30 grand on a wedding is crazy like i'd never want to do that but then when you're there in the moment you see everyone having a good time and it's like a sick day you can i always think all right well i can see why some people want to do it Mm -hmm. to get all the family together because it's rare that you have those occasions like that it is yeah, yeah. So it brings everyone together I mean, doesn't it all, everyone coming from Canada Italy UK yeah so yeah. it's like a massive yeah. moment you know yeah you exactly. guys are going to remember that forever yeah exactly 100% so yeah it was sick man it was definitely sick like the main well, question I'm, I'm actually, ready to get back the main to, point to beat making is uh, did you get a burrito whilst you're out there what was the burrito saying in Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy? I didn't have Don't one didn't burrito. Have oh my oh gosh, wow. Until I got <laughs> to the airport. What? <laughs> airport? Until airport I got to the burrito. airport on the way back. <laughs> oh wow. Because <laughs> they didn't really have them in the in the resort. They had, but they had loads of tacos there. Do you know like those soft yeah. tacos? Yeah. Everything was tacos. I had loads of those. Yeah. Because everything's just included, and you have this taco stand that was just in, um, like, just outside the restaurants, uh, like fresh tacos. So I was eating those like constantly, but yeah, no one was really selling burritos. Even when we went to the the restaurants, like the main thing seemed to be tacos. Mm. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if fair. I've been lied to my whole life. Are burritos <laughs> even Mexican, or I was have say, we just yeah. kind of taken that, <laughs> just turned them into something else. Taco slap too. It's still the yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah, no, the tacos were slapping. There were some good ones there. <laughs> so what are we saying, yeah. tacos or burrito? Um, I still have to say burritos, I think. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't get the proper, the proper ones there. <laughs> so I need another trip to Mexico now. But the type, the type that part. has you on the toilet the whole time you're there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the proper tacos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well the food was getting everyone there i think because maybe because we're not used to like whatever bacteria they have in like the water to wash things or whatever it was like everyone in like the party there was just dropping like flies like people <laughs> some people were ill for a few days and it'd be the next person and oh, then no. <laughs> everyone Man. got a bit ill at some point <laughs> mm. damn but we are good yeah <laughs> what have you yeah. boys been doing um, not a, just normal stuff, really, man. Like the release, released the the kit last week. Uh, was it last week? Last Friday, and um, yeah, yeah. Just that I was like the, the main focus. Go. Yeah, good actually. Yeah, better than I thought it was gonna go. I was kind of like not too sure whether it would do well because it's kind of like it's not like a traditional kit. It was just like an eight to eight kit. There's like a lot of bonuses in there, which obviously like jazzed up a little bit, but. I wasn't too sure, but yeah, it went it went yeah. a lot better than I was anticipating. So, yeah, I can't complain. Sick. Yeah, that's good, man. But yeah, other than that, man, just um, is the yeah, launch just, is the launch finished now? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Or I'm still are you dropping still like doing other things to push it. Yeah, I'm st I'm still dropping like reels and stuff um, on like like TikToks just to kind of promote it that way. And then today, I'm going to start mm -hmm. planning planning for the next one. I'm actually releasing, <laughs> finally releasing the song. I'm just trying to plan a way to do it logically. Yes. And, yeah. <laughs> it's been going on for uh, the longest. <laughs> and, uh, I'm thinking of maybe doing like a little, like a free kit if you if you pre-save the song or something. Similar, kind of similar to to what you did, Jay, with yeah. with the with the album. Um, but yeah, that's oh, the okay. that's the next thing. Sick. By the way, has, has someone got a fan running in the background? Oh yeah, like it's me. It might, it might be me. Oh, is it you? No, I think oh. it's me. Yeah, one second. I can hear Let it too. But... Is... One minute. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Right. I thought someone was vacuuming. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, it's just my laptop fan. I had to turn it on. You know how we had it at the Airbnb. Oh, it's your laptop. Turn it on. Yeah, oh, to turn it on like yeah. turbo mode because <laughs> it gets kind of hot when we're recording. All <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the beauty of the the M1 Max in the ocean. Zero noise from them. Pretty much. Yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> but sorry, yeah, what were you help. saying? So you've got you're gonna do the the pre-launch campaign, like the um, like pre pre saves. I think so, yeah. I'm going to get the song finalised ne- by the end of next week and then get it submitted and everything and choose a date for it. And, um, yeah, try and just promote the pre-saves. And then I think, yeah, just because um, it's, it's mainly going to be producers that I'm going to be reaching out to because just naturally because of our audience. So, yeah, I'm thinking of maybe just dropping yeah. some kind of some kind of kit, you know, some kind of kit for the release of it maybe like because it's a guitar song maybe like a guitar kit like a starters you know guitar starters or guitar loops and then just giving that away for free yeah if they pre-save i'll, I'll do it you know i'll pre- set the pre-save price for like as low as it can go and then um yeah just give away a kit for for them pre-saving it nice yeah will this be the start of many or the first i don't many? know I, i'm not sure i don't think so because i've tried it re- like every now and then recently like over the last few months and nothing really has come it's fun to do but like yeah i don't think it'll be like every month kind of thing it'll be maybe once every year or once every couple of years like nothing crazy yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so i think you've got to really want to do it as an artist yeah if it's something that you wanted to to get something back from anyway yeah exactly i think it's similar mindset to what some what you had like it's fun it's a fun project at the time you know like it's good to it was fun to make and then record it and stuff and it's exciting to yeah. do like all the marking because it's a little bit different but uh, yeah at the same time i'm like i don't i'm not i don't have like that um the dr- the same drive for pro- for making songs as i do for producing and the business side of it and all that kind of stuff so i'm not even going to try and yeah yeah try and do it you know yeah yeah that stuff makes you realize how much artists actually have to put into it to do it properly. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And the amount of songs, like, it's rappers sit on as well, like, so you know, from so much, man, like, from the amount of sessions you'll do and the amount of songs that they make compared to the amount of songs that actually get put out, it's, like, so crazy. So, yeah, yeah it definitely makes you appreciate it. Because yeah. when you think about it, putting out just one song to really get the promotion good takes a lot man not even just time and ideas and brainstorming but money too it's, yeah it's a lot yeah. of money to promote a it is yeah yeah like videos yeah. are expensive although i don't even think music videos are as important anymore compared to what they used to be anyway yeah i think like with anything there's ways to do it on the cheap yeah like obviously yeah, yeah. So, uploaded to social media doesn't cost you anything like in my opinion like the best thing for artists to do is just uploading snippets of tracks just in different locations because that doesn't cost anything mm. it's like you don't need to pay anyone for like music videos editing you could just be anywhere and then just yeah. post like a 30 second snippet of like a good part of the song maybe like a, the hook or one of the best parts of the verses and just keep posting those in like just, loads of different yeah. locations because that doesn't really cost anything yeah 100%. Even those, i think that works are looking like music videos Mm. I've seen Said some really, really good ones. Um, just short snippets are looking like music videos these days. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I'm seeing the levels yeah, yeah, like exactly. constantly keep getting better and better. Yeah. Or even if you do, because I, I was trying to do this with Gio when we did the Love and War album. So whenever we went to, um, whenever we did one of the music videos, I kept on asking the director, I was like, every time we go to a new location, or even just a new scene, can we just make sure we get like a clip of him, you know, for short form content to to just like either spit the verse or the hook or whatever it is. And then just that's your short form content then. Cause yeah. let's say you do like five different locations and in each location you do like three different either like angles or mini scenes yeah. or whatever it is. Then you've got like loads of different pieces of content to post. Um, yeah we didn't end up posting those like i was that was what i was telling geo to do anyway but it didn't end up happening but that would have been perfect because then you got the music video but then you've got all the short form content to post with it as well 
and yeah. it's not yeah, even exactly. something where you have to think too much about it because you're already there filming the music video so why not just get another shot not even on you don't even have to do it on like the good camera just when the guy's like yeah. setting up the next shot just get someone to pull the iphone out and just film like a quick thing there mm-hmm. exactly yeah exactly. i think i think another thing that's important for like little short film things is just like if it's a vibe like i, f- I saw a, a shot of dina she's like on the beach um it literally just looked like she whipped out her phone and did like a little sing along to like i think it's called there's there's a way like just one of their recent drops and it was yeah. just her and her and like one of their you know one of their their group members just in the background they're just literally on the beach just vibing out and then there's like another one in a restaurant and just little shit like that stuff that's like spontaneous mm. um i feel like that's yeah. cut, like you say cost nothing to do just use your phone camera and it's a good way to kind of just promote the song i guess just create like a feeling around it yeah definitely have you got yeah. a campaign for what you're gonna do are you gonna do something similar to that um, yeah, I'll definitely do a bunch of short, short stuff around it, like short, con- short film content. Um, I'll probably go out for the day and just get like a load of clips, <clears throat> like nice, like you said, nice, like aesthetic looking clips. And then I'll also just post like when I'm, yeah. at, you know, when I'm in social occasions, I'll just whip it out and then not whip <laughs> I'll get my phone out and then I'll uh, <laughs> pause. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go one podcast and I'll say it's a good sus. But um, yeah, I get my phone out and then just maybe film like some like selfie videos or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that'd yeah. be sick. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so what, the what's the official date? What's the release date? Uh, I haven't got one yet. I'm gonna f- figure that out today. Um, I'm just I'm just going into my. You need one like, by next l- week. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Have, I'll have a lot to say by the end of the day. I, I just need to um, see how long I need to promote everything. I think I'll only need like two weeks of like pre-marketing and then drop the song and then have some YouTube videos ready for it and drop the video and everything all at once. So I think, yeah, maybe, what's the date today? 12th. But definitely before mid-August, I think. Just that'll give me enough time to plan and everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've only had a couple of years. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly oh god so bad literally filmed a video when did we film the video it was like back end of summer last year and then i made the song like the year before that <laughs> it's not it's not even like a crazy song like it's, have you it's not changed even, like, the beat up or anything in that time um i was i was tempted to go back in and switch a couple things up but i haven't changed anything just yet but when i finalized the the song yeah. and the mix and everything then i'll um maybe think about adding one or two more layers because it's quite a simple beat it's literally just a guitar loop that someone sent me and then i put literally like a hi-hat an 808 and a, and a rim shot maybe in it maybe an open hat it's like yeah. super simple but i don't know sometimes those beats are kind of nice oh, yeah. just the simple ones yeah of course yeah it makes you realize as well like when artists drop tracks like how old those actually beats could how old those beats can actually be you know mm. like you just think oh it must be fresh but they're probably just using beats that they picked about two three years ago and just never <laughs> yeah. dropped the track mm. S- some artists do it differently where they'll maybe just sit on a bunch of stuff and then release something a bit more modern yeah because in those like two to th- three years obviously the sound just shifts so much so maybe by then it's like too late to release the tracks it's like now nah, this was like 2022 music like, yeah because yeah. the sounds just changed even so much from them but a lot of yeah, people exactly. do still release them and then like yeah it's like a beat that was made a few years ago yeah i think that kind of helps it kind of pushes you as a producer really to like try not to follow well i guess you can kind of not have to do it but like try not to follow waves so much and just kind of like trust your own sound because then like you say, if you, if you get a song with an artist and you're there trying to make what everyone's making that year and they make a song, like say fast forward a couple of years and they're going through their songs to drop, they're never going to drop that one because that's, that's two years, the wave was two years old. But if you kind of stick to your own guns and yeah, try and trust in your own sound, then yeah, if they come back to it, they're like, oh yeah, that's actually quite an interesting, interesting sound and beat. Let's, let's go with that one. Do you two think it's up to the producer to change the direction of music or do you think it's up to the artist i think it's hand in hand yeah yeah both really 
because the producer is the one that's going to be making the instrumental but at the end of the day a lot of the times it's the artist that's gonna really decide like what direction they want to take their art so yeah they have to pick the beats they have to pick the beats they have to pick the the vision and something Mm -hmm. that's true to them so it's got to be a mixture of both I think unless it's an artist that just fully trusts in their producer and yeah mm, the producer is more like the guiding the guiding force if that makes sense but those relationships I, I don't know like how common that is anymore if if there's I mean obviously of course you still get like the artist and the producer that locks in but mm-hmm. there's also a lot of artists that float around a lot get beats from here and there so those kind of guys yeah. I guess it's it's mm-hmm. more on them to like move yeah. in the direction that they want to go yeah definitely yeah of course I think most producers as well we do make experimental stuff every now and again like we'll make what's popping just because it's what people are asking for and it's on trend but then we also make our experimental stuff too but then like you said like the artist has to pick that or they have to trust their producer to go with that sound yeah because you could make something like right now that's not like anything else that's out there but a lot of artists would be scared to release that because or scared to use that beat because it's just so different yeah and they don't know what reaction they'd get whereas if you go with something that is just like the sound of the moment then maybe they're kind of playing it safe but then i don't even know if it's playing it safe because then you you also get all the people who are like ah we're hearing this already like we want something new it's really hard to like please people definitely i think also though sometimes it might not even be their decision sometimes it might be the decision Mm -hmm. of the label that they're signed to yeah because a lot of the times it's like yeah that song sounds cool but let's go with this one because they know like this one the market's more ready for it they're more open to that kind of sound sometimes it it might even be true sometimes it might be real sometimes the they got their data they got the analytics they might know like oh not this one just yet but maybe in like two three songs time but but i get like it's really hard to say because it's it's just very case dependent no one's like a hundred percent right all the time yeah 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 a hundred percent did you guys see that um Pivot. You guys see uh, LL Cool J <laughs> dropped a new song last night, new music video. Nah, just popped up on nah. my uh, YouTube I've this missed, morning. Like, the last few days of music. Mm. Was it good? good. What's it like? <laughs> it's alright, man. It's quite old school. Like it's an old school beat they used, and it just—I don't know. I, I, I enjoyed it. It was just like classic. He wasn't trying to like bend to anything. He just lit. He just—it felt like he just wanted to write a new song and kept to his own style his own taste and then released it it was yeah it was, it was quite good yeah man what I'll a career he's that. been going since he was 16 15, that's 15. fucking oh, crazy yeah man. that's yeah. wild and he's still going still, still going music. strong that is wild his career goals that i saw that common released um what's that channel called is it is it off the block or on the block you know the one with just the mic hanging down oh Look yeah the name right there yeah. They came to the UK for a bit, didn't they? And they did a few guys over here. And then um saw Common, you know obviously you know Common from like Common, like Mos Def, like everyone mm-hmm. from like back in that era. He released one that was like real old school. Um mm. which is kinda cool to hear because you just I don't know, everything that you hear now is just so modern. But then you, you bring the old heads on and then they're still sticking to that old school sound. Yeah. It's like you can tell oh, you can tell straight away by like the flow they use and the beats and everything, it's like this sound is like pretty much 30 years old now <laughs> but they're still running with it mm-hmm. yeah still rocking it maybe it's 20 still, years from now still nostalgic we'll have... and still still bangs though yeah, yeah. that's the thing like, yeah, yeah of course maybe, that was there maybe that's the way to go maybe like you you, sh- you should be staying in your lane in a way when you're like 50s 60s you know what i mean I'm yeah like, i mean he could do the drill thing he could do a sexy drill beat and i'm sure it would sound sick but like most people know Common for his kind of sound. I want yeah, to give him that sound. Like he, that's one of those things. Like he just he won't miss. He cannot miss. It's yeah, done it that many times. Know. It's like definitely impossible to not make a, a good song. Maybe someone his age, like if he did try and do something new, like if he rapped over a drill beat or something, now people would be like, "What are you doing? <laughs> like this isn't you. <laughs> this, this guy's washed." You might be able to. Sometimes you can tell that people are trying to like force it. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, I dropped his album today as well, actually. Yeah, I literally I just pulled that video yet. up. Um, I, I didn't. What, I, what did I pull up? Eminem Habits. That's what just popped up on my YouTube. But I've, oh, I've so he released a new a new song to go with it. I think so. Yeah, like it's like the official audio. So I'm guessing it's like just one of the songs off the album. Yeah. So, int intrigued oh, okay. to see what that sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, I need to listen to that today. I say I've just missed like the last few days of music, but that's like the big drop for today. Because his his last few tracks have been going crazy. You know the he did the uh, Houdini one, and then mm -hmm. he dropped the and one that, with that was more like his old sound as well, right? Yeah, yeah, that kind yeah. Of, that was like that his pizza. fun sort of like slim shady, slim shady. Like Eminem show yeah. type of vibe, wasn't it? Like yeah. without me. So he's dropped like his fun track, and then he dropped a more serious one with. Baby Tron and Big Sean. Oh, yeah, I heard that one. Which was pretty sick, like the three generations of Detroit guys. And that yeah. was pretty sick. So he's dropped like his fun one, then his serious one, and then I don't know what his third one will be like. But I'm intrigued to hear their album because his, his last two songs have been getting like really good response from people. So his last like few albums, people have been a bit like unsure. They're like, oh no, we want the old Eminem or we want this, like we want this style from him. But now it feels like he's kind of just. I don't know, just gone back to his like old self, which is just mm. about his bars again. Like yeah. He's got his fun track, but then he's just, yeah. He's kind of going with the style that everyone likes him for, I think. Yeah. So we'll see what the album sounds like. But yeah, still, his different. numbers are still crazy. That's and someone who's been just consistently performing well for years. Yeah, I don't think so, he can ever fall off. He's just too nah. culturally impactful, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And that song Worldwide was as well. The song that I've got open now was dropped six hours ago and it's already on the mill. It's only an audio. It's only like an audio video. <laughs> so yeah, mental. That's insane. Big like numbers. whenever you look on the iTunes charts, like his albums are just always up there. Like people are just buying his albums constantly. Even like his old ones, like still to this day, everyone's just buying. Like people don't, people rarely even, well, you think that people don't even buy albums anymore because they're just streaming, but there's, I guess there's still a market for it in some ways. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's so. probably a lot smaller than streaming, but I don't know. There's just been so much noise about streaming and people not getting paid fairly, and AI and all all the noise around the music industry has been kind of negative. Yeah, no, may, may, maybe there could be more of a shift going towards like going direct to your artists and just supporting them. Yeah, that would be interesting to see. I don't know how people would do it though, because I know a lot of people are trying to to push it like that like that La Russell, I know mm. he's like he's been killing it for that like just going direct to his um consumers and he shares his figures sometimes and he makes like a lot of money just by selling his albums directly to his consumers instead of streaming although I think he has some of his projects on streaming platforms I know like Curtis King as well he's trying that mm. as well he's going down that direction I see like quite a few people trying that I yeah. just don't know how it would work for the consumer because when we listen to music, we just want we want access to everything, don't we? Well, it Whereas makes it way buying, more inconvenient. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I was trying to get at because it's like if you buy an album from one artist on their side then another artist on their side, then how do you get everything together on one platform? Because you don't want to be going to like different apps just to listen to different music or different websites or you don't want to yeah. be downloading... Like downloading like MP3 files right now and adding them to your library just seems so long. Yeah, it's too it's too old school. Maybe mm. maybe it takes like a, there's a Spotify, but you have to pay to unlock it or, or some shit like. Yeah, that. Yeah, I was but just thinking that like if Spotify yeah. had a function where, yeah, you could. It was like streaming music, and then it was like yeah, you have to pay to access certain music. Then if you had the option to do that when you upload yeah. it, then that could be a cool thing then yeah like you say you keep you're still on the same platform but you just you still have the option to to charge for entry almost yeah it seems like there will be someone at some point that develops an app to to make it like Man. that i know some people are trying it in like the um not the crypto world but like the blockchain world like they're developing certain things that are making it way more convenient for everyone to get paid but it's like you Whenever you stream streaming music, like the way they ha I don't even know how to describe it, but the way they have it set up on like the blockchain is for, like everyone to just get paid like instantly, yeah. depending on what you're listening to. 
I was listening to I forgot what the guy's name is, but when I find it later, I'll I'll send it to you. Because there was one guy, I think he was on DJ Payne One's podcast where he was like just describing what he's set up and how he's made it way easier for for all the artists to get paid, and basically thinking it's like the future of how we're going to consume music and how everyone's going to be happy essentially because it's not the big people like Spotify taking like the huge cut and then the artists getting the small cut. It's, it's distributed like way more evenly. Yeah. But through blockchain technology. Maybe there could even be a thing, this thought just came to my head, where on Spotify, you subscribe to someone. So for example, mm. instead of paying $10 a month, maybe it becomes, I know it's a lot more and not everyone can do this, but still, let's just say it costs a dollar to subscribe to someone. So I want to subscribe to mm -hmm. Drake, I pay a dollar. I want to subscribe to Eminem, I pay him a dollar. So maybe I subscribe to about 50 people and I pay $50 a month and they get the majority of that. Because if you think about it, if Drake mm. gets a dollar for every subscriber and he has 20 million monthly listeners, but maybe like 5 million are paying him subscriber, then that's a lot of money for an artist. Yeah. And Almost like a super fan. Just, yeah. And then maybe yeah. you can still listen to people's music without subscribing, but maybe there's a limit or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or you need access you get to early access projects. to things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That could yeah, yeah, that could be a good thing. It just depends if Spotify would agree to letting the artist keep the majority. That's, or if yeah, they'd that's be like, the Yeah, you pay this pound but or you pay this dollar but, <laughs> but then they get ten percent or something. They're getting ninety yeah. percent, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So but hopefully man, because it seems like everyone has been Spotify has just seemed like the bad person for so many years now. Mm -hmm. It's like, which, which is like not, you said. I don't think it is because they came around when people were just starting to pirate music. So you've gone yeah. from buying music to just stealing music, essentially. Yeah. So you, so now that there, there's at least some middle ground, even though it's probably not as favorable as it was back then. But then again, there's many benefits. Like you can just make music and put it out. You don't have mm. to necessarily go to a label or go through gatekeepers, even though that stuff maybe might help with promotion. But still, I can record a song today and just put it on Spotify and people can listen. Yeah, to it. yeah, yeah. Yeah, like it's way more accessible now. Yeah. And even for the consumer, it's just way easier. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I don't yeah. think it's all, all negative. I don't think it should be all negative. Like, yes, yeah, Spotify keep like a big portion of the song. But I think like, in today's age it's been it's way easier for artists to make a career off it or get paid compared to what it was before streaming platforms yeah. like because people think they got it hard now but rewind to before these streaming platforms like to get your music out there you'd have to get your albums printed on cd then it's like right how do i get my cds out there you've got people mm. selling them in the streets like, do you think how many people do you think would do that th like today do you think he's printing cds and going out on the streets and trying to sell them directly to people that who, who have never heard of you like that's mm -hmm. tough yeah and then same with like the blog sites as well trying to reach out to all these blog sites um to get your music on their platform seems way harder than just distributing your music and promoting it yourself through social media like it's way more in your control right now Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. It's Even though they take skill. like a big portion of it, they build yeah, it's a platform. A different skill. Not everyone's gonna build that platform, and yeah, exactly. It's a different skill set. Yeah, N now artists essentially have to become content creators, and even if yeah. they're not, they're just creating some sort of mystique online. So maybe they have to just yeah. be really good at branding to try and build a buzz or get attention some way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's like so. I guess less less hands on than. I don't want to say less hands-on, but just it's just different grind, man. Different grind to yeah. printing CDs. Yeah, it is, yeah. Going door-to-door -door selling them. And doing open thing, mic shows and stuff, because that was still another thing like, back then. Yeah. 100%. I heard uh, like a little quote, and it was like, if you want to be an artist nowadays, like you're a content creator first. Who, you're a content creator who makes music. That's like the mindset you should have going into it, because like, you can't go into it I mean, you can. There's the obviously there's the the anomalies where it does it does work if they just go into it all about the music. But you have to be prepared to to grind content out in order to to get any kind of momentum or buzz, you know, kind of behind your brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
yeah which is obviously like sad to think about like for artists they're not bothered about creating content they just want to make great music but even before this you were like you still had to have a different skill set it's never just been about music really no and when it or if it has been like back when labels would like really use a and r's to like find great talent yeah that was so hard to get found that way and you'd still have to put in all the effort of doing all your open mic events like traveling like putting in as much work as you can to actually get heard by an a and r so it is just like like you said it's a different skill set it was like you have to be a great marketer either way yeah pretty much yeah yeah that's it but yeah, Ocean was going to ask, how's, um, did you say you, are you launching your community soon? I saw, you, I saw your YouTube post the other day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be launching that around August time. I'm just, well, I've, I've pretty much put it together, but I still just want to add a few more stuff in, inside before I launch it. Yeah. So what's it going to include? Like, what will people get? So they're going to get access to chat rooms and stuff like that so they can communicate amongst themselves and talk and network build build yeah. a good hopefully good friendships from it honestly but then also mm-hmm. i'm going to be jumping on there doing live calls every now and again feedback on music i'm also creating a few different mini courses and videos and stuff like that to help them um so i'm putting that together as well nice yeah, yeah it should just be a nice place people can come and i feel like sometimes this journey of music production can feel a bit lonely especially if you're not around music producers like sometimes mm-hmm. i forget because we're really deep in it, we have people we can talk to and, mm-hmm. oh, let's collab, let's go to a studio. But a lot of people don't have that. They're just doing yeah. it by themselves in their bedroom. So I think it's important that um, there's a community that they can feel at home, basically. Yeah, definitely. That'll be sick. Yeah, I saw you yeah. post about that. So looking forward to that, man. We've all got our communities now. Yeah. Yep. That's good. Yep, yep. It would be good because we could bring them together sometimes as well. Like we could do calls on each other's c- platforms. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just about to say that. Just kind of introduce yeah. each other to, to everyone. I'm sure people yeah. would enjoy that. We could do like some group sessions at some point. Definitely. I'd love yeah. to do some yeah. in-person ones in the future as well. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And you're, you're back in the UK soon as well, aren't you? Yeah, maybe next week. I'm not 100% sure yet. Basically, yeah. something happened. So I need to be back for that real quick. And then okay. after that, I'm going to be in Spain for a month. For a month mm. minimum. So, yeah, I'm just going to be chilling out there. Yeah. Yeah, you, you sent the text in here to see if we wanted to, to come over. I don't even know if I replied to that. Um, I was trying to work out the dates because I'm going to be somewhere in August as well just for like a, a few nights I think so I was just trying to see if it's going to cross with that but yeah, I mean if you're still down for it I'm willing to come out yeah it'd be, it'd be sick to see you guys and Spain is fun man I can't I cannot wait like I'm super buzzed yeah. to be there yeah I can't wait bro whereabouts in Spain are you going to be? I'm going to be staying in Madrid so I'm going to base there yeah um, maybe on the weekend check out different places because the train system is good and it's not too pricey it's very right. well connected. A couple of cities that I might want to check out. Maybe even get some collabs in. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Madrid is going to be the base. Yeah, that would be sick. I don't even think I've ever been to Madrid. No, I mean, yeah, nice. apparently, though, in the summer, people. I, I, I've been to in Madrid in the summer before, and I remember it being hot, but people have been saying, like, it's crazy mad hot in the summer there. Will be in the summer. Mm-hmm. Well, perfect yeah. though as soon as I've come back here it's like 15 degrees which isn't terrible but it's, it's not great we've just come from like 30 every day in Mexico mm, it's yeah. all grey outside for summer. Like, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's bad for summer it's just grey yeah, clouds been, out there so it yeah. doesn't really as soon do anything as I can get an opportunity summer. to go away again I'm there yeah it's been kind of like just we had like two three maybe good weeks of like good summer weather and then after that it's just been cloudy and in fact warm enough but yeah not like anything crazy so yeah need to get some sun Typical need to get British some proper weather, sun <laughs> yep of course Pretty much. yeah we should try to do a in-person podcast 
whether it's in yeah. England or in Spain, they might have somewhere in Madrid. Like the studios are quite common to find these dates, aren't they? Yeah. But I'd be cool if we could link that. I even I got a nice Airbnb, so we could even set up there if we couldn't find anything. Because I'm gonna still bring not everything, but a lot of my, my a lot of my equipment, like my mic, camera, some lights. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, could be cool. cool as well. Yeah, that'd be decent. What's the What's the purpose? going out there is it just to work in a different environment pretty much i mean here my visa is expiring and oh yeah i remember you saying you've got to leave for a bit and then come yeah, back yeah it's, it's best that i leave for a little a little while and then return i'm not mm-hmm. gonna lie though i i do really want to move to spain <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not gonna do it yet <laughs> so it's just me just right. like get, getting my little fix for now <laughs> god <laughs> yeah <laughs> How long have you been in Thailand? It's been about six months now, so far. A few days. Already getting bored. Crazy fast. So fast. Yeah, it's gone quick. No, it's not even that, to be honest with you. I do like it here. It's it's super good. To be honest, I'm kind of just locked into my routine anyway. But yeah, it's it's more just a long term thing. In Thailand, I will always just have to keep extending or buying a new visa. Whereas, like right. in Spain. I get one visa, I turn it into a residency that will last me five years, then I turn it into a... Like, it's just more long-term building, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And to be honest, I I wanted to move there originally, before Bangkok, but there was just too much bureaucracy and I wanted to move quick, I'm not going to lie. Right. Yeah. I hear that. Plus, you speak Spanish kind of well, don't you? So, it's way easier for you to navigate. Yeah. Yeah. Here as well, like, certain things you can could buy property but you can't own land you can't right. have a business a hundred percent it has to be split with a Thai person oh, really? not that I'm necessarily thinking of doing that but these are like these are just long term plays in my head whereas where I'm in a country and I want to build a life I, yeah. I think about these things I haven't looked into moving to Spain what's it like moving a business to Spain did that you say I that the taxes are I'm quite high? Lie. Yeah, the taxes, the taxes are scaling. It's, it's similar to the UK, but the taxes mm. are higher. So it's like based oh, really? on how much you earn, maybe the first 20 grand is X amount, then the next 10 grand X amount. But it slides up to 50% quite quick and way quicker than the UK. <sighs> so That's it, wild. It, it makes sense to maybe just keep... I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've been digging and going down a rabbit hole, speaking to lawyers and shit. It makes sense to just keep your UK company. Oh, okay. And, and you can do that when you move when you move to a different country. I suppose you're not giving up your British citizenship, are you? So Nah. Um I think you'll be fine for at least the first five or ten years or something. Okay. And they've got this they've bad. got this thing called the Beckham Rule. Have they they made this law. Oh, you mentioned the Beckham yeah. Rule, yeah. Yeah, when David Beckham moved <laughs> there. So that that's something to consider as well. What is the Beckham rule? Quite, yeah. It's like a, f- a f- okay. It's basically a flat rate income. It's a flat rate tax based on income you've earned outside of Spain. Mm. And because in Spain it slides up quickly, rather than it sliding up for you, it would just be a set amount. Okay. So it makes it more <clears throat> what's the word inviting to to want to move to Spain. Yeah, yeah. Rather than right. looking at it and be like, oh, this, the taxes are too high, fuck that, I'm not going. And yeah. they done yeah, it yeah. so but David Beckham could come over. <laughs> yeah, That's I remember, mad, it, it? was it the last one we were speaking about? Or maybe a couple of weeks ago, but yeah, this crazy that they made a whole rule just for him yep. to move over. Yeah. That's how oh, impactful way, he was. You guys yeah. see the Euros? You guys been watching the Euros? Yeah, I've been watching Cars, them. man. Yeah. I think yeah, we're going to do it. It's coming home. You think it's coming home? It's coming home. home. <laughs> I think we've had so... You, you know when just stars align and you're just yeah. so lucky all the time that you just yeah. have luck on yeah. your side. It's just meant to be now. Yeah, 100%. That was the first game where it was actually exciting to watch, especially yeah. the first half. <sighs> yeah. They played well. Played really yeah. well. They lost steam a bit, but the first half they played super good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was I watching that thing. just before I had to set off for the flight as well, so... If it went to extra uh, time, I would have missed it. So I was like, come on, just oh someone man. score so Last I could just minute, get on my flight. Uh, <laughs> it's know, twice, it happens, twice in it? the same tournament. It's perfect. Man. Twice in the same tournament. Yeah. I think the last one, <laughs> Bellingham from, from won the time this. Bellingham had that, that moment, I yeah. just thought, 
man I think it's you, you cannot just have that moment you know what I mean they ha- there's, yeah, something, and not there's someone looking over and being like it's your time yeah. now I think someone <laughs> I saw someone post it like if we do win it'll be like one of the best things that's happened in years in the UK like we we need something like this to happen in the UK because it's so shit at the minute <laughs> like we need something to kind of pick everyone <laughs> up again bring some more positive vibes back to the country <laughs> yeah 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 nah I, 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 uh, I'm looking forward to it I can't wait yeah it's, me it too it comes on about 2am the matches but I stay up and watch it stay up when's the final again? Sunday, Sunday. oh it's this Sunday at 2am Mm-hmm. Well, where's the game? Oh, oh, not two, oh two a.m. for not me. It's going to be him, like six yeah, yeah. or seven for you. Oh gosh, yeah. I'm thinking or eight, something like, like that. Two a.m. Two a.m. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I, I went it. to watch. Yeah. <laughs> I went to watch. Um, My brain's still in Mexican time. <laughs> I went to watch the Slovenian game at the at the local like sports bar, and they had like they've got a fairly yeah. big smoking area not like a beer garden and it had them they had a massive tv outside plus the inside had a massive project projector and when that second goal went in when mm. the bicycle kick went in i've never been drenched in beer so much but it would absolutely berserk there were so many people <laughs> there it just went crazy and then for the yeah which one was it the one that we won on penalties like that one went crazy as well when we scored the last penalty yeah and then yeah the switzerland game mm. as well that I, i'd watched the switzerland game at home but when that last goal went in, I was like, "Damn, I wish I was. I wish I went out to watch it now because the <laughs> atmosphere was crazy." Mm. So, oh, we yeah. that that pe- when we had those penalties, we were watching it in the bar in Mexico, like in the resort, and they had like three different TVs in there, but they were all at different times, and the whole game <laughs> was getting like connection issues, and so like in the yeah, like when the penalties were happening like the main TV would cut off and then everyone would go to the other TV and then that one would cut off. Everyone would run <laughs> oh, to the wow. other TV. And then at one point, all three of them cut off and then this one girl managed to get it up on her phone so like the whole bar is just watching it on the screen oh. <laughs> like one of the penalties. <laughs> and then the That's other sick. TV comes back on and everyone's just like cheering like crazy every time one of the TVs comes back on. It's pretty funny. <laughs> wow. That's a joke. <laughs> oh, that's sick. <laughs> yeah, nah, it's, it's, it's been good, man. Can't yeah. Like proper, I'm proper looking forward to watching it. Yeah, yeah this should too. be sick. That's gonna that's be good, a blackier man. game when we was losing until like the ninety something minute. Oh man, I was so upset. I'd, I had I was sitting <laughs> at the bar. I was just like, let me just pay my tab. Let, let me just I'm just about to get up and go. Let <laughs> me just get oh, out. Sick. Fucking bicycle yeah. kick. Man. What? Like, Com- like the the whole vibe <laughs> of that entire game. Even like when we were down, I was just like, it was so bad. This is so depressing. Like, we're it not even so playing negative. good. Yeah, like, I would have rather we played good and lost, and then we were playing shit, and then all of a sudden that fucking kick goes, that that shot goes in, and then the second goal was just like like minutes later. I was just like, man, thank God for that. Such a relief. Mm. Everyone's been hating Southgate, haven't they? But if he <laughs> yeah. wins it for us, everyone's gonna love him. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I think if he went out against the Sl- Slovakia when when we scored in the yeah. last minute, then that would have been it. Yeah. I could understand why people would be hating on him because yeah. it, Gosh, the yeah. football was so bad. I mean, it honestly, so England hasn't played great this tournament. Yeah. Only, only realistically, Spain has played good football. They've probably been mm-hmm. the best team by far. They should beat us and slap us. But I just feel like <laughs> we've got the minerals this time. We've got the aura. <sighs> if we man. play like we did that first half just then, then we'll be all right. Because every yeah. time before that, we've just been scared to take chances, so we're not creating chances. Literally, like, man, it's so it, boring. Yeah, it's so frustrating, you know, when you see someone, like, get it near the box and you're just like, just shoot, just, just fucking have a chance. When it's yeah, like, make something nil, happen. Like yeah. the 80th minute. Just but so then they take, like, 10 more touches and it's like, oh, my God. Yeah. It's like they, it's yeah. like they yeah. want to have, like, a clean path through to the goal and it's like, no clean path, right? I'll just give it back to Pickford, start again, and then same yeah. thing, turn around, start again. Yeah. Like, Apart from Foden, though. Foden's good, yeah. Foden will take those chances. Yeah, Foden. And Saka as well. So Southgate would have got all that hate because everyone was just playing out of position. And for such mm-hmm. a good, like, individually on paper, when you look at England, we've got so much good players, we should not be losing to Slovakia. So yeah. If we yeah. lost to Slovakia on playing, a, like, one of our worst teams, everyone out of position, then I think yeah. it makes sense. But... Yeah. Yeah, crazy. We turned it around though. We're in the final, so Yeah, we managed to managed to get Man. through. 
So Mad. we'll see. Fingers crossed. <laughs> you guys gonna watch it at a bar this weekend? Yeah, gonna have to. I'm probably gonna watch it at home. You know, I, I'd like to have some atmosphere, but I'm just looking to just chill this weekend. I've yeah. got somewhere. I've got to be out all day tomorrow for my little nephew's birthday. So mm -hmm. by the time it's Sunday, I'm just looking to to have a day at home. You know, when you're away for a little bit, like you just miss your yeah. own environment. So yeah. I think I'm just gonna watch it at home. It would be sick to watch it. Uh, just for the atmosphere somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The last year of final you? that we did, I watched it at home. I'm going to go to a place, but the thing is, last, I didn't watch the Netherlands games outside, but I watched the Switzerland one outside and everywhere was packed. There was no seats. So, yeah. and now it's going to be the final. I'm probably going to have to get there two hours early or something mm. to try and get a yeah. seat. Yeah. Yeah, I think, that's good. I think that everyone's going to be in that mindset. I think I think pubs are just going to be packed from what what times kick off in the UK? It'd be like five o'clock, or is it eight o'clock? I think it might be eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. So it? yeah, I reckon they'll be packed from like now. midday because it's the final. Everyone's just going to be out all day, especially in the yeah. UK. Like it's just full of <laughs> just pissed heads really. So everyone's going to be out from like oh, midday. <laughs> they'll get food out. They'll get everything out just so they've got a table for when it starts yeah 8, eight o'clock it starts for you guys yeah. 8 p.m that's all right yeah i'd love to be in the uk to, to watch it though but i'm, I'm so excited right. to get to, yeah. to a bar to watch it it's going to be crazy hopefully yeah, yeah. and to be there get when somewhere. they win if they win oh man it's, it's <laughs> gonna be crazy oh, especially bad. especially because we lost the last one you know yeah of course yeah Exactly. Yeah. This is was it four years ago? We were watching it at that producer link up. That was the we Euros. Watched, wasn't it was. It? Yeah. Twenty twenty one. We watched the semi finals. Oh yeah. yeah. Against Denmark. It's crazy. Two one. Yeah. I remember that like clear as day. Kane missed the penalty, but then got the rebound. The rebound. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I remember that. Like we all was like shit. What? No. Like, yeah. Actually scored. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, that was the first. That was the first day being trip, wasn't it? By. Yeah, it's gone so quick. Yeah, that's the first time yeah. that we all linked up. Yeah. Proper first one. That's pretty wild to think. <laughs> yeah. And I was also going to say, um, I think we, oh, well, I don't, obviously he was away, Jay, but Jack was going to do another link up. I thought it was this month. Well, I know it was this month. And then I checked the dates and it was like last weekend. So I don't even know if it happened or not. He only mentioned <laughs> it once it. in the chat. Yeah, I oh, think okay. I missed it. Yeah. So it's hard to get everyone together when everyone's just got their own schedules, everyone's busy. See, Jack has a kid now. Yeah. Does anyone else have kids in that group? He might be the only one. Yeah. Dixon's Ed. got a kid. If oh, yeah. Ed, too. Ed. Dixon. Dixon, yeah. So it's difficult. I feel like back in the, it was easier. It seemed easier to get these, to get them arranged, maybe because we had sponsors and stuff as well. But yeah, it just seems a bit more difficult to get everyone, everyone together. Uh, under the same roof yeah of course and yeah. there's more heads involved now as well like there's other people that have come up over the past few years which has been good to see yeah but we're definitely doing another one we'll say it like every week don't we <laughs> but we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll try and do it Spain would be a good opportunity Spain would be good when yeah. you're over there Ocean even if like if there was like a few people that went we could just rent like a separate Airbnb just for like one or two nights yeah, and it's not too far, maybe like two hour flight, if that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I'm definitely up for coming then. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But yeah, have you got anything planned for the next might be a good kit? time to wrap it up. Okay, yeah, no problem. If that's cool, but for the next kit, um, nah, <laughs> that's, that's going to be something I think about on Monday, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure on that one yet. Kind yeah. of finished things with that boom bat bundle. I've got a beat battle running for it. So I think once that's done, um, and a couple other bits, then yeah, I'll start thinking about the next thing to create. But no idea what it's going to be yet. <laughs> not yeah. sure at all. No, I'd like to fair. do something different again. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. How I'll about you? Ball rolling. Um, yeah, I think just the, the song next, so a little kit for that. And then I'll, I'm going to start planning another one after like a bundle one. It's just good to keep on to the next one. Yes. Yeah. I don't know about you, but um, like you'll f finish a kit, drop it, and then you just kind of 
sit back and then you relax for a bit and then before you know it like uh, two or three months has passed and then it takes another month or two to make the next kit mm -hmm. so you just gotta keep the ball rolling and try not to to slow down with it yeah I, I agree i always feel a bit aimless when i'm not working on something yeah um but i want to focus on the community a bit more now as well so yeah i might put some time into the community a bit and then yeah focus on the next drop yeah yeah that's cool sounds like a plan i think my yeah. camera's just died as well so that might be a good yeah. time yeah yeah good signal to cool. finish it <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right guys get some rest all right boys <laughs> yeah definitely yeah <laughs> speak to you soon boys peace right, take care man see ya